Suzuki's strongest techniques in Naruto ranked. Suzuki Uchiha is one of the strongest characters in Naruto and many of his best jutsu show that in the most striking ways possible. Not only is he proficient in fire and lightning style as expected of his clan Suzuki is very good at developing new techniques and making older ones all his own. As often as he gets knocked down he almost always comes back up swinging. He's had some very unconventional training and improvement methods from striving hard on his own as a child to match his older stronger relatives to dipping into forbidden techniques under Orochimaru. For much of the series he's been willing to do anything to become stronger including sacrificing his own home body and loved ones. Even though he's mellowed out considerably once Naruto rolls around he's still the Leaf Village's most powerful protector. Like Naruto Suzuki has mastered techniques of all the elemental styles of Jutsu by adulthood. However true to their names Uchiha are particularly strong in fire style Jutsu and it's Suzuki's natural affinity as well. He wore arm protectors in his first outfit for a reason, since he was a young child trying to impress his dad he's been able to pull off the signature technique of his clan which creates a massive fireball that can burn craters into the earth. Good luck to anyone who gets hit with it point blank. The fireball may be short range but it's big enough to pack a serious punch. Its only drawbacks are its aforementioned range and relative lack of flexibility making it simple to dodge but Suzuki makes good enough use of it for it to stay a staple jutsu for him even as he gets stronger. For instance it's even enough to hold off an enraged Naruto in their fight at Final Valley. The ability to summon some of the best animal companions in Naruto is a key part of many a shinobi's arsenal. Like the legendary Sun and before them Team 7 prove their abilities by contracting with the same enormous and powerful beasts their respective mentors did. In keeping with Orochimaru's affinity for serpents Suzuki is able to summon the great snake Manda. Being the largest snake in the world Manda is intensely proud and volatile and controlling him could be tricky. Suzuki skipped all that hard stuff by only summoning Manda as a last resort using the poor guy as an Ophidian shield against Deodara's final attack. Later he contracts with the Hakuruda who provides him transport and is even loyal enough to protect him in battle willingly attacking Danzo with his talons. Substitution Jutsu is also a basic trick that every ninja needs to know and is often used to fool an opponent or escape a sticky situation. Gaining the Rinnegan granted Suzuki many game-breaking powers including this jutsu which opens up several more possibilities for him than a simple substitution. Ameno de Shikara allows him to instantly swap places with anything by shifting between spaces whether he's looking at it or not. Suzuki uses this technique for a lot more than just dodging enemy attacks. With it he can instantly summon a weapon into his hand or infinitely increase the range of a normally short range attack such as Chidori or Suzanu by teleporting the attack itself to the opponent or ensuring it hits its mark by teleporting the opponent directly into its way. The only downside is that he has to be careful how he uses it because it needs time to charge and overuse strains his eye. Suzuki's signature jutsu is what Kakashi got when he applied lightning chakra to the principle behind his sensei's raise non, a mass of very noisy electricity focused sharply in the user's hand and rushed at blinding speed to pierce an opponent. Once he masters it Suzuki evolves it into several more effective variants such as the Chidori stream which broadly increases the technique's range and gives it a defensive quality by expanding it from the user's hand to stream the electricity all around their body. Like the fireball jutsu the Chidori's weakness is its short range and straightforward trajectory. Ordinarily a successfully executed Chidori would be too fast for the user to handle or aim properly. For Kakashi and Suzuki both that's where the Sherry Non comes in, with the proper physical training to keep up with it their eyes are more than capable of tracking and controlling it enough to use it effectively as many of their opponents throughout the series find out the hard way. Viewers were first introduced to this technique by Nagato who primarily used it to seal the tailed beasts for his use. When Suzuki gains the powers of the Deva path along with his Renegan he forges it into a weapon. During the fourth great Shinobi World War Suzuki's use of Renegan is fundamental for the outcome and he's almost on par with Madara's own use of the technique. Much like Suzanu Suzuki quickly sets about putting his own spin on the technique once he starts using it in battle. When he utilizes Chibaku Tensei he uses wild amounts of chakra to build multiple spheres of solid material that he can move around at will. 
It comes in particularly handy if he's outnumbered, busting this jutsu out will enable him to trap and control several powerful opponents at once. Kirin is named for the Kailin of Chinese mythology which traditionally herald the arrival of a great sage or ruler. While they are often associated with giraffes they have also been depicted as horned dragons like Suzuki's jutsu. Shinobi powerful and creative enough to develop their own jutsu are among the most intimidating opponents one could find. Up until his final fight with Itaka Suzuki did everything he could to become strong enough to kill his infamous brother. As he reveals in the fight's final act this included honing his skills in lightning style jutsu to create an attack that couldn't possibly fail to land a fatal blow. Kirin has a deeper meaning that connects to Suzuki's path in the story. It is also unique in that it doesn't rely on electricity generated by the user's chakra. It harnesses real lightning from naturally occurring storms or ones created by Suzuki's fire style and launches it full force at the target in less than the blink of an eye too fast to dodge. It's strong enough to completely destroy their surroundings and likely would have ended one of the best sibling rivalries in anime instantly if not for Itaki revealing his Suzanu. All three major Manjikyo Sherry non-techniques, Amaterasu Sutsukuyomi and Suzanu, are named after the three strongest children of the creator god Izanagi in the pantheon of Shinto gods. Unlocking the Manjikyo Sherry non is a vital stage in the most ambitious Uchiha's development as a shinobi. Because their clan loves so deeply and hurts so fiercely when their loved ones are lost the only way to evolve the Sherry non to its next stages and begin to use its strongest techniques is to suffer the loss of the person the user is closest to. While Ataka favored Tsukuyomi Suzuki comes to prefer its opposite, Amaterasu the ultimate fire style jutsu. Named for the Japanese goddess of the sun Amaterasu's black fire burns eternally if the user wills it. It can be used for attack and defense in equal measure, in addition to launching devastating flames who is going to risk attacking an opponent wreathed in a shield of those same flames. As Suzuki becomes stronger in his use of the Manjikyo Sherinan his control of Amaterasu is much more refined. As handy as Amaterasu is Suzuki's real favorite of the Manjikyo Sherinan's techniques is Suzanu, which being named for a younger brother with an affinity for storms tracks for Suzuki after all. A gigantic avatar of its user formed entirely from potent chakra Suzanu shields the user and moves under their control to attack. Its offensive techniques are much more varied than many of the other jutsu in Suzuki's arsenal. Suzanu's many forms are not only influenced by the god it is named after as befits one of the best anime based on Japanese mythology but by their specific user as well. Suzuki's differs considerably from Itaka's and Madara's with a more bestial appearance and often a sword. He can even siphon others' power to evolve it such as Jugo Sage abilities and even the Tailed Beast's Chakra using the latter to equip his Suzanu with the lightning he's so fond of. Indra's arrow is directly inspired by the Hindu king of the gods Indra who is associated with the Sky War and Storms and whose favored weapons are the Bow and the Vajra, Thunderbolt. Much as Suzuki loves swords he takes a leaf out of his distant ancestor's book and arms Suzanu with the shinobi world's biggest and baddest bow and arrow. To launch Indra's arrow he draws on the powerful chakra of all ten-tailed beasts to form its weapon and places it in the hands of his fully completed Suzanu to light it up with lightning chakra. Finally Suzuki fires an enormous two-pronged arrow of pure lightning to devastate everything in its path. Indra's arrow is made particularly notable by the technique it's shown to be equal to, Naruto's six paths, massive rays and shuriken. In one of the best fights in Naruto Naruto must enter sage mode assume his full nine tails transformation create two shadow clones and fuse with them and finally form two different giant rays non in each trio of hands all brimming with his strongest chakra. Indra's arrow is enough to negate all of that in a single attack. This is not only the greatest gift given to the users of the Rinnegan it's Suzuki's single strongest jutsu offensive and defensive. It shouldn't be surprising, Mastery over the very fabric of space and time is something that only a select few shinobi in the history of Naruto's world can claim. During his many years working outside the village Suzuki has had plenty of time to practice this jutsu. The technique is similar to the kamui that Obito used to trap people in a single pocket dimension but with a considerably wider range. 
when Suzuki opens his portal he has access to all the multiple dimensions used by the Itsutsuki clan and with no one else's chakra needed or any strain on his eyes and body like other high-level jutsu. Though it costs him a lot of chakra of his own to use its overall limits seem to only be defined by Suzuki's strength and willingness to develop the technique in his spare time. We want to hear from you. Share your opinions in the thread below and remember to keep it respectful. This thread is open for discussion. Be the first to post your thoughts. Gohan has achieved a wild new level of power in Dragon Ball Super but he may owe his new power to a key difference between Super and its dark future. Joy Boy's appearance in One Piece Chapter 1115 could indicate that Luffy has yet to awaken his full potential hinting that there's more to come. Angel's Egg the cult film from legendary director Mamoru Oshii is set to receive a 4K remaster which is officially coming to the West. Gojo Satoru has returned to Jujutsu Kaisen to fight Sukuna one last time but not in the way fans expected with one hero making a huge sacrifice. One of One Piece's greatest heroes Joy Boy could be more similar to the series' greatest villains than initially believed. Demon Slayer has moments of comedic relief that lighten the dark series and many hilarious scenes but these are the funniest ones so far. The reasons why the UA Trader chose to join all for one prove that discrimination is the biggest issue in the world of the series.